بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So let's talk about free fall Let's talk about free fall First of all Let's talk about the meaning of free fall Free fall means the motion under the force of gravity only the motion under the force gravity only يعني هلا احنا عنا we have f is equal ma however this f is f net is equal m g so for f net to be free fall f net is equal the force of gravity only okay what does that mean well that means in, in reality in reality on earth we don't have any free fall if you want to go for the exact definition ليش لانه always we will have the resistance of air the force of friction or drag force of air so f net um, does not equal fg always you will have opposing uh, force so that's strictly speaking طيب إذن why we teach it and etc etc and solve problems well if the object uh, is falling um, from small heights then we can ignore the friction force or the drag force or whatever force exists beside the gravitational force so it's a very uh, good approximation if the height is small طيب if the height is um, um, large well in the problem we will mention for you uh, ignore other forces except gravity or if it is not mentioned we assume that it's a free fall in the problem if you see the term in a free fall um, experiment that means we move only under um, the gravitational force only so that uh, we need uh, to understand that's one uh, two um, before uh, Galileo um, Aristo at that time people were believing that heavier object will fall faster than a lighter object which is wrong which is wrong if the object is heavy or the object is light if the motion is a free fall they will have the same force of gravity and they will reach the ground at the same uh, time at the same time um, let's see this uh, video about um, uh, free fall This is NASA's space power facility near Cleveland, Ohio, and it is the world's biggest vacuum chamber. It's used to test spacecraft in the conditions of outer space, and it does that by pumping out the 30 tons of air in this chamber until there are about two grams left. And it's kind of got an eccentric construction, which is part of its history. It was built in the 1960s as a nuclear test facility to test nuclear propulsion systems. And that meant that they built it out of aluminium to make the radiation easier to deal with. Aluminium is not the best thing, the strongest material to build a vacuum chamber out of. So they built an outer concrete skin, which is part radiation shielding and part an external pressure vessel. So that this thing can take the force that's present on the outside when it's pumped out to the conditions of outer space.
Galileo's experiment was simple. He took a heavy object and a light one and dropped them at the same time to see which fell fastest. Now in this case, the feathers fell to the ground at a slower rate than the bowling ball because of air resistance. So in order to see the true nature of gravity, we have to remove the air. It takes three hours to pump out the 800,000 cubic feet of air from the chamber. Okay, we dropped two millitor in the last 30 minutes. But once it's complete, there's a near perfect vacuum inside. 6104 manual, 10% open. Station one, go for drop. PCV 30-1, pressure set point at 240 PSI. We are go for drop. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, cameras on, two, one, release. Exactly the same. Oh. Feathers don't move, nothing. Look at that. Look at that. That's just brilliant. Isaac Newton would say that the ball and the feather fall because there's a force pulling them down. That's a free fall. Now, after uh, you enjoy the free fall, uh, it's due time for some physics. It's due time for some physics. Yeah, it is very interesting. Okay, hello. Let's see the strategy of solving um, free fall problems. Free fall problems. And also, this is the strategy to solve the Y component in a projectile motion when we talk about motion in two dimension. So pay attention uh, for this uh, strategy and you can uh, refer to it all the time. Okay. The first strategy when we solve um, free fall problems is to determine our reference point is to determine our reference point so you choose a reference point you can choose any reference point but to make things easier on you you choose the reference point so y node is equal to zero. That's the first strategy. Choose y node to be zero. What's the meaning of that? Yani, I can choose this reference point. I can make this as my y node reference point. But then but then when I write the equations y is equal y naught plus v naught t plus v naught 
plus half a t square. I always have to put this distance in my equation. So this is um, my y node. If my y node at this reference point. However, if my y node is at this reference point, then I will write y is equal zero plus v naught t plus half a t square. I hope it's clear. So based on my reference point, it will determine um, how I write my equations. So if, for example, my y node is, let's say, 1.8 meter, when I write this equation, I have to write here, I have to put 1.8. Clear? Uh, doctor, can you repeat it? Well, your Y node, you choose, you can choose any reference point to call Y node. For easier solving problems, you choose Y node where Y node is equal to zero. So here I choose Y node, the blue line. When I write my equation, it will be y is equal 1.8 plus v naught t plus half a t square. If I choose my reference point as the green line, then I will write y is equal 0 plus v naught t plus half a t square. Yes, yeah, Khalid, we answered that before. I told you. Uh, all the equations will be in, in the exam sheet. Yes, yeah, Ahmed. Yani, uh, <laughs> excuse me for this, but that means you, you didn't hear the equations, uh, you didn't hear the recordings for previous uh, lectures. That's 1.8, that's the height when he raised his hand, assuming that this is the height where he raised his hand. If you don't know the height, then in this situation you cannot use your uh, Y node um, uh, in the blue line. Yani, if I don't know what is Y node, what's the height of his hand, then I cannot use the blue line. I have to put assume Y node to be zero at his hand. There is no question, Ya Adil. I'm talking about strategy when solving free fall problems. So that's the first strategy. Where to put your Y node, your reference point? Where to put your reference point time now in order for illustration I'm going to remove what I wrote you can see it in, in the video so I can um, it will be less confusing so I will remove so here I assume that my Y node the reference point is at his hand where the motion started. So in this way, y node is equal zero. So I get rid of this. So that's first strategy. Tai, second strategy. Second strategy. I need to determine where is positive from the reference point. And where is negative? I need to determine where is positive 
and where is negative from the reference point. So my reference point up, I'll assume it's positive. My reference point and down, I assume it's negative. However, if one other student or depending on the problem, um, he will assume that up is negative and down is positive. I can do that. A student can do that. But then you have to stick to your invention. You have to stick to your invention. So if I assume up is negative, then all my equations, anything moving up is negative, anything moving down is positive. If I assume up is positive, then everything moving up is positive, everything moving down is negative. So that's the second step in solving threefold. I will just remove the black one to be less confusing. Type. So I assume up is positive, down is negative. That's the second step. The third one, and this is more of understanding, G is always pointing down. G is always pointing down. So if I assume up positive, down negative, in this problem G will be negative. If I assume up negative, down positive, G will be positive. But always G is pointing down. You will never have a problem that G is pointing up. Always G is pointing down. Okay, so three things. Reference point, where is positive, where is negative, G is always pointing down. Now let's see the problem. A stone thrown from the top of a building is given an initial velocity of 20 meter per second. So I determine here my reference point at the hand of um, uh, the thrower. So that means when he talk about initial velocity, V node will be plus 20 meter per second right away because I assume up is positive. The stone is launched 50 meter above the ground. So this distance 50 meter above the ground so that means uh, my y is minus 50 meter. Why minus? Because it's above the ground but below my Y node. Above the ground, below my Y node. This is not a minus sign, by the way. It's just a dotted line. And the stone just misses the edge of the roof on its way down as shown in the figure. And what is G? Also G is minus 9.8 meter per second square. 
again y minus 50 this is my reference point below that that's a negative above that that is a positive so that means my y is equal minus 50 So those numbers are the key to solve the problem. If you write any of those numbers uh, wrong, you will end up with the wrong answer. Doctor, uh, what's the reason uh, we have uh, y as negative 50? I just uh, repeat. Yeah, yes, I my, uh... my reference point is here the green line and I assume downwards is negative and because y is below my reference point so it's minus 50 not plus 50 okay clear So, it's very important that you put those numbers correctly. Other than that, even if you use the equation, it will give you a wrong answer. Now, let's go into solving uh, parts of this problem. A. Using t is equal zero, or t a is equal zero, as the time of the stone leaves the thrower's hand at position a, determine, this is the question, determine the time at which the stone reaches its maximum height. So this is the equation that we are going to use. What is V final as your friend uh, said as Iman said well V final must be equal to zero because He told us which the stone reaches its maximum height Maximum height that means V final is zero and yani the stone will will stop for a moment Tayyip knowing the equation will not uh, save you you need to um, put the numbers in the right way in order to use the equation so now it's clearly for everybody that you don't need to memorize the equations and even if you memorize the equations it will not help you we will provide the equations you need to know how to apply the equation so let's see how to apply it v final minus v initial over gravitation v final is zero minus v initial or v naught is plus 20 gravitation is minus 9.8 now i will get an answer a correct answer clear no Yusuf G is always pointing downward G could be positive G could be negative based on your assumption but G is always pointing downward. Why G is negative? Because I just assume that pointing downward is negative, pointing upward is positive, and G is always pointing downward. So in this specific um, assumption, yeah, G is negative. 
But if a student say upward is negative, downward is positive, then G will be positive. G is not G is not always negative. G is not always positive. It's always pointing downward. Yes? This is the beauty of solving the physics problems. If the stone is going upward or the stone is going downward, always V node is positive. Always y is minus uh, 50 or negative and always gravitation is negative if we use this assumption that's the beauty of it you don't need to worry where is the direction of um, the stone while i'm solving the problems the the equations will tell me um, where is the direction of the stone? But I need to start like this. Put a reference and then determine um, my values in the equation. Hi. Let's try to do part B. And uh, as I told you before um, about the police Remember when we solve a problem about a police is chasing a car, that's a typical problem. You will find it always in physics uh, books or in exams. Also, uh, this free fall problem, it's a typical problem. Yeah, and you will find it in, in all physics books, this typical problem about free fall. And if you understand the free fall, it will be very easy for you to solve uh, projectile motions afterward. Fine. Find the maximum height of the stone above its initial position. Above its initial position. Yani where? Yani above the green line here. He is asking. For this height so this is this is part B yeah it will be positive and uh, pay attention if he ask you relative uh, to the ground then it will be this distance plus the 50 if you say above the ground he said relative to the hand of the thrower, that means we are dealing with this um, distance. And it will be positive, of course. Okay, so this is our equation. This is our equation. Y node is zero. Why? Because we assume the reference uh, at Y node. V node is a plus, plus 20 meter per second. And the time we calculated from part A, plus half, and then G is minus 9.8. Multiply by the time squared. And we get right away 20.4 relative to its initial position. Because it's plus, that means it's above the relative position. Um, Victor. Fadal. Um, if he asked me about the height of the stone relatively to the ground, do I have to add 50 to the final answer? Well, um, you will add you need to add 50 to the final answer because now we need to consider this distance b the part b plus this distance because now we are talking about relative to the ground yeah okay well 
uh, Muhammad say, where did the minus sign uh, came from G? Well, from here. We assume downward is negative, and G is pointing downward, so G is minus 9.8. Again, this is a typical problem. You will find it uh, most likely. You, you will find it in all exams. You will find it in all books of physics. Time. Determine the velocity of the stone. At فضل يا أحمد. Yes, Ahmed, talk. Oh, maybe my, by mistake. Okay. Determine the velocity of the stone when it returns to the height from which it was thrown. Ayo Abdurrahman, um, uh, excellent, smart. Well, I don't need even to solve this problem because of conservation of energy this is y node this is v node well when it go up and come down it will be the same v node but a negative sign same v node positive sign because of conservation of energy because of conservation uh, of energy so fadal uh, yeah, can't we solve this question with another equation? Sure, if you have all the numbers, yeah, sure. It will give you the same exact answer. Okay. It will give you the same exact answer. So, if you understand the concepts of physics, when you see this kind of question, determine the velocity of the stone when it returns to the height from which it was thrown, right away it's the uh, same V initial. But opposite direction. Fadal. Uh, هو دلوقتي إحنا لازم نعمل كل ال steps دي عشان نجيب الإجابة. يعني مثلاً أنا في الامتحان كتبت minus twenty على طول. هاخد الدرجة. Yes, you will. Um, uh, عشان السؤال ده مش محتاج equation يعني هي yes. معروفة. ال... Yes. لما ترمي هترجع بنفس ال speed. Uh, you okay, will. يعني. Yes, yes. Um, oh, when sure. when you write in the uh, exam that the answer is minus twenty. Justify it uh, with one sentence that you can say because of conservation of energy, it will be minus 20. So I will know that you understand it uh, that, and I'm sure that you didn't pick it from your uh, neighbor in the exam. Yani sometimes you will just not all students, but sometimes students will cheat. So he will look like this to the left or to the right. He will find minus 20, he will write minus 20. So in this case, you write minus 20 because of conservation of energy. So you hit uh, uh, two stones in, in one bird. First, it's correct when you justify it like this. Second, you will save the time. You will save the time for this question. So supposedly, uh, it, it's given um, three minutes, for example. You will save this three minutes for other um, more difficult question for you. Tayyip, suppose that I don't, I forgot this concept and I want to solve it. Well, here is the equation: twenty square plus two multiply minus. 8.0 and uh, y node is 0 when it was going up and y node is 0 when it was going down Lenno, um, returns to the same height returns to the same height so it's 0 so 400 I take the square root. Now pay attention when I say what's the square root of 400? The answer is two answers. P 
plus 20 and minus 20. So which one to choose? By common sense, I choose the minus 20 because I know that uh, the stone is going down and according to my convention, down is negative. So I'll choose minus 20. Again, another typical question in the free fall. Find the velocity and position of the stone at t is equal 5 seconds. Well, I'm going to use this equation. V naught is positive plus acceleration is negative multiplied by time. So, V node, velocity, is minus 29. What's the meaning of minus 29? Yani, it is going down at 29 meter per second. Theoretically, it wasn't the exact same value as V node. Is there a specific reason? It wasn't the exact value. Of course, it's not the exact value. After five seconds. He's asking you after, at, at, five seconds yani after five seconds of course it will not be uh, the same v naught talking about part c part c is the same part c is was minus 20 meter per second and the initial was 20 meter per second uh, that means okay okay well thank you for uh, saying this yeah yeah man uh, listen carefully, everybody. If you tried another equation and you have a different answer, one of them is wrong. Because if you use um, method one or method two or method three to find the answer, they have to match. So if you use one equation and then, or the book use one equation and then you used another mm -hmm. equation, and it's wrong or it's different that means check your answer because they have to give the same exact answer well in in the problems we will give you we will tell you assume g to be 9.80 or 9.81 but in this problem it is assumed as g is equal 9.80 so if you use uh, 9.81 you will have a slightly different answer slightly different answers Tai. that's the uh, velocity Taib, he wants the position well, I use this equation. Y naught is equal zero. V naught t is plus 20 meter per second. This is the time. Half minus 9.80 multiply by 5 square. And it will give me uh, minus 22.5. What's the meaning minus? That means this is my reference point. This is my Y node. That means it is 22.5 meter below Y node. That's the minus mean. Well, yeah, sometimes it's a uh, sneaky uh, multiple choice. He will tell you uh, relative to the ground. 
relative to the ground. So in that case, as Ahmed said, well, it will be 50 minus 22.7. So with respect to the ground, it will be 27.5 meters. What if the throw were from 30 meters above the ground instead of 50? Which answers of part A to D would change? Well, none of them will change. Because uh, we didn't consider um, Y in all of our problems. If it is 30 or 50, we didn't put it in our calculation. Now, the few uh, slides uh, coming about the derivation. We need to understand one fact. One fact. We start with x, the displacement. We derive it. We got v velocity, we derive it, we get the acceleration. Let me just make it a little bit thicker. So, we start with x, we derive it, we get v, we derive it, we get a. Tayyip, what is equivalent to derivative on the graph? It is the slope. The slope. Here, derive. Here, derive. Now, let us start from A. If we know A, can we get V? Yes, by integrate. If we know V, can we get X? Yes, we integrate. What is equivalent to integration? is find the area or just write area we know v what's equivalent to integration we find the area clear that's the summarize to summarize a few of of course Of course, like you know, you know the function of A. You know the function of A. You can get the function of V by integrating with respect with time. You know the function of V. You can get the function of A of um, displacement by integration with respect with T. That's the function. If you want a specific value, then you need specific interval. Same thing here. You have the function of displacement. You derive it. You get the function of velocity. You derive it. You get the function of acceleration. Of course, you need um, to have the exact value. You just substitute to have the instantaneous velocity or instantaneous acceleration you want the average value you just use two values in the function or you just find the slope in the graph so this is the relation between calculus and the kinematic laws 
الحين the advantage of using calculus to solve the kinematic laws is we don't need to assume constant acceleration or constant velocity if you use the calculus to solve your kinematic problem. You can um, just integrate or differentiate. There is no constrictions on the acceleration or the velocity. However, if you are going to use the kinematic uh, laws that we derived from the graphs, well, we need to assume that constant acceleration. Constant acceleration. Any question? We just just go through um, all those uh, equations, but to summarize it, is this one. Um, Victor, Tfaddal. can we like um, like are we obliged to know how to derive the kinematic equation? Yes, you have to. Um, the ones we skipped. Yes, you have to. Why? Because um, um, nobody can cover everything in the book in the class. We will we will need six hours or seven hours per week. Right. Uh, your advice is my advice is study them, study them, and if you have any problem, come during the office hours. And yeah, of course, I will study them, but will I like do like will I use them in the future or at least? You need, course? you need, because, uh, like we get, we get the, um, the summary, which is the kinematic equations. So the way we derive those equations, as for my opinion, we won't be using them. Well, you are an engineer, you, you don't know when you can use them. No, you I mean, in this course. I know well, in I this course, be... yeah, you, you expect, maybe you expect a question in the exam. I will ask you to derive this equation, for example. Okay, okay. Yeah, you need, you need to, to understand that, and it has to go deep inside um, your, your soul, is that um, uh, we start with displacement function, how to get velocity, we just derive. How to get acceleration, we just derive the function. Mm -hmm. uh, the reverse, I have the function of acceleration. How I can get the function of velocity, I integrate. I have the function of velocity. How I can get the displacement function, I integrate. That's one. Yeah, I know those are, those are simple, but those are related to the function. I was talking about the four kinematic equations. Well, uh, the kinematic equation is just nothing but the derivative. But in the kinematic equation, we put a restriction that A must be constant. Yeah, I understand. I mean, like, okay. usually, yeah, we yeah, it, the, four, the four kinematic equations. Like, yeah, we well, well um, when, when, that, yeah. when you assume A is constant, that means it's not dependent of time, and for sure, the velocity equation is uh, dependent on t, and the x um, equation will be dependent on t squared. Right away, I know that because I assume a is a constant. However, if a is not yeah. constant, then I need to go through the full derivation, the full integration, backward, or I start from the displacement and I go um, a full derivation to the right. You need to understand this. You need to understand that yeah. the equation under motions, the kinematic equations, it's a limited version of the whole thing. Uh, you can tell me that, yes, I understand it now. However, if you don't do the derivation, um, you will forget that in a week or so. Yeah, I mean, I was I was familiar with the derivation and the integration of functions, 
but my question was mainly about the four kinematic equations which are limited to the constant speed or constant acceleration like those four kinematic equations do i have to know how did we get them or just like yes yes you need you'll yes give me them exam. yeah yes you need um, uh, well if if you look at all of them it's just one step mm -hmm. or two step to get from one to the other uh -huh. yeah, it's for your own benefit it's j just one step or two step to start from one and go to the to, to the next equation so it's oh, for your own you. uh, benefit just substitution right. yeah it's it's yeah. just one step or two and it's simple okay. mathematics yes but what we need you to understand is that the derivation to start from one function to reach another or to go back and uh, I tell you uh, I tell you um, uh, when I took physics uh, physics one that's long 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 time ago we had we had uh, in the final exam a problem of uh, a function where acceleration is not constant and he gave us the um, displacement function and he asked us to to solve all kind of um, different find velocity find displacement find etc etc find the time and we have to go yeah. through just uh, full derivation to find the answer so it may happen you need to understand that. All right, I'll, okay. I'll go through them. Okay. okay. You and um, by the way, you need to do it once in your life. Yeah, and you once you need <laughs> yeah. to do it. And yeah. uh, mashallah, attendance. خلصت الحصة لسه يا شيخ محمد سعيد لسه إحنا 12 ربع إن شاء الله بناخذ بال attendance. طيب. Like this, we finish chapter uh, two. Let me stop the recording.